Hello, today is Wednesday, the 21st of January, 2009. This is Brian Shannon from Alpha Trends. We had a uh, reversal of yesterday's uh, losses. We didn't uh, quite gain back uh, the entire loss from yesterday, but uh, very impressive strength here. The NASDAQ finished with a gain of 4.2%, uh, now down uh, less than 1% here on uh, the first two days of this week. And, um, you know, it, it continues to be extremely volatile in here. The 10-minute uh, time frame, we can see that the market uh, opened with a little bit of strength here, pulled back, and then uh, let's take a look at the one-minute time frame. Opened with that strength, pulled back down, did, did battle with that VWAP, and then uh, was able to push above it with a little increase in volume here. It then tested the, the uh, volume-weighted average price and uh, pushed past some resistance here, and then it was pretty much straight up into the close. Uh, we had one little pullback here. Uh, but that, vo that the volume did trail off on that uh, uh, pullback. So, uh, you know, the market keeps it very interesting for us from day to day, that's for sure. If we look at the, uh, you know, where we are, we came up to this little downtrend line from the most recent, uh, you know, from this gap lower here, uh, the, this trend that's been intact over the last two weeks or so. And uh, bullishly, we're back above uh, the, the five-day moving average. If that can hold and that 2850 level, then I think uh, the possibility is that we can uh, continue to uh, push a little bit higher here, and uh, uh, perhaps uh, we've got a little bit of a, uh, a a bear trap once again. We'll see, though. I mean, it's it's tough to to predict when when we've got this much volatility. One encouraging sign here. Uh, comes from the uh, moving average convergence divergence oscillator, the MACD. I do have a, a video about that on the side of the blog under popular post. But what we saw here was that the uh, the, the lows uh, that that occurred y y late yesterday, and uh, you know the the weakness this morning or the weak part of this morning, we saw a lower reading from the MACD. What that means is the intensity of the selling wasn't as great as it was on this pullback right here. What it does is basically measures the uh, distance between two different exponential moving averages. And uh, when the uh, shorter term moving average travels away from that longer term moving average, the result is the difference uh, right here plotted uh, as this MACD indicator uh, on the histogram chart. And you can see that the uh, shorter term moving average didn't move as far away from the longer term, meaning basically that, again, the speed of the decline wasn't as great the intensity. So uh, a lot of times that leaves us in a position for a reversal. We've got uh, you know, we've got this trend line here is going to be important. We're back above 2850. Of course, that's the level that we had been watching. Now we've got two drives under there and two quick recoveries. So uh, that 2850, if we can hold above that and the, the five-day moving average, uh, perhaps we can uh, see a little bit further strength. Again, I'm going to point out the ideal uh, scenario. The ideal scenario is that we would get a pullback down towards this 2870, 2865, 2870, find support, and then push higher past this uh, downtrend line. Markets don't always do what we want them to do, but that would be the best case scenario for uh, you know for positioning yourselves uh, uh, in in a long uh, trade uh, for in the in the queues. Of course, the daily time frame still a big mess in here, uh, as is the weekly time frame. But we you know we're not we're not staying down basically. We're getting these pushes lower, but we're not staying down there, and that's the important thing uh, to take away. I think here the last couple of days is that. As we push past that 2850 level, uh, the market does recover quickly from there, and that is somewhat encouraging. It's uh, you know obviously we remain in a uh, very tricky environment. We've got earnings uh, really starting to pick up the pace uh, today. After the close, we've got Apple and eBay. Those are going to be widely watched, obviously. Um, oil, uh, oil today got got up above the uh, five-day moving average. Let's take a look in there. We'd seen this little trend line break. And that was coincident with the five-day moving average. Now, I think that if 30 can hold in oil, then we've got a possibility that uh, we've got a new uptrend emerging similar to here. How high it goes is anyone's guess, but what we want to look for is, uh, you know, ideally, again, a pullback maybe towards 30, and then a pattern of higher highs and higher lows uh, emerge. So if we can pull back, see that five-day moving average hold just above 30 bucks a share, 
uh, then I think that uh, the USO could be a, uh, a, a good uh, shorter term, you know, in short to intermediate term trade, uh, perhaps where you can push past those 10 and 20 day moving averages in this resistance here uh, near about 31 and a half. And that could put us put the 50 day moving average into play. It still remains, though, obviously uh, in a downtrend. We've got a declining 50 day moving average. So be very careful about position sizing and how much risk you're willing to take in a downtrending market that, you know, maybe is just due for uh, nothing more than a bounce. Uh, semiconductors uh, also showed uh, that that same divergence in here that, you know, with the MACD on the 10 minute time frame, we saw, uh, you know, the, you know the, this morning we saw new lows in here. But uh, as the market got back above the, uh, the daily VWAP in here, then we saw a continued push higher. Right now, uh, you know, this market remains a mess. It's good to see that it did get back above that 1665 or so level that uh, had been uh, previous support in kind of uh, given this market trouble, I think that, uh, you know, potential upside could be up near 17 and a half or so. Uh, a little pullback maybe would be bullish in here, maybe even below, you know, down as far as 1650. If we can create a higher low, I think that basically if we can, you know, if we see the market is, it looks like this. If it pulls back and then it, it begins to maybe flatten out a little bit and then we get a little bit of momentum. These are the types of buys that you want. You don't want to wait for new highs and that sort of thing, but you want to buy there and then place, a, you know, your protective stop or your mental stop just below that higher low and then see what the market can give you. And then our job is to continue to hold as long as that pattern of higher highs and higher lows uh, re reveals itself. The Russell 2000, we'll start with the 30 minute time frame here since I've got that on. But, uh, we, you know, the 30 minute time frame, we can see that the market did get back up above these uh, lows near about 44 and a half. Uh, let's take a look at the hourly time frame because we can also see that uh, divergence in here as well where we had lower lows in the market, but higher lows in the uh, moving average convergence divergence oscillator. And on the 10 minute time frame, we can take a look at uh, this as far as a, uh, a trend line, or maybe you know something that looks more like that. Either way, um, you know this represents basically we're right up towards that trend line. We did get up, uh, you know, pretty extended here late in the day from the push past that forty-four dollar level. Let's take a look at the one-minute time frame. Here's where we had some resistance at forty-four, uh, forty-four, and you know maybe a quarter or so. But the market pushed really nicely past that level. And when you you know when you're looking at things like the Russell two thousand, don't forget about these uh, leverage funds such as the TNA, which is the bull the long bullish. It went from from basically 23 and a half past its resistance up to 26. So, uh, you know, much bigger percentage movement. These things, you know, this one's been around for about two and a half months. But if we uh, go back to the uh, Russell 2000, you know, the daily time frame is still a mess in here. So you can't get too excited about one day. One day doesn't tr change a trend. We see, you know, internally we see some encouraging signs with the MACD, with the uh, fact that we're back above that five day moving average. It, it would be good to see that five day moving average flatten out though, find support near there and then be able to push higher. I think that is really what we want to look to see happen. Let's see if the market cooperates. If we break back below about 44, then I think you would uh, have reason for, for concern. Uh, the more, you know, concern of further breakdown in the short term. The uh, XLF, the financials, uh, these guys have had a, a big day today, up 14%, still down huge for the you know year to date and that sort of thing. But we did see a uh, you know bigger increase in volume. We saw yesterday the all-time lows actually in the financials, and today uh, you know right now we can only look at this as a uh, snapback rally in a uh, downtrend. Guilty till proven innocent. It was unable to get back above its five-day moving average. What we'd like to see in here, if a rally is going to continue, is maybe a pullback down towards 865 and then break that trend line, recapture that five-day view, uh, five-day moving average, and uh, you know see what can happen there. But it's uh, it's still, you know, you've got to be if you're trading these on the long side. I still think that they're uh, much better left for uh, for day trades only. The S&P 500. 
Of course, we've got the bigger level in here. Let's take a look at that uh, up near $86. That's what gave us trouble and reason for concern earlier in the week. That's where the five-day moving average was met with that uh, resistance. We saw the breakdown yesterday. Um, we did see in here also, even more pronounced maybe, uh, was this... Uh, um, uh, MACD divergence also confirmed by the volume the volume was lower on the second drive down meaning there was less supply released to the market so uh, maybe we just ran out of some sellers in there uh, for the short term but you can see we're you know broke past that little trend line let's magnify that on a 10 minute time frame we'll take uh, we'll take one off of here and we'll take one off of this level so you know we've, we're, we're above the five-day moving average on a closing basis that's good to see I think your best level of support right now is going to be found right here near about 82 and a half or so um, if it can pull back down towards that level uh, I think you would want to look for evidence of buyers and then uh, potentially uh, trade the long side uh, the market is going to be continue to be very tricky let's take a look at uh, where Apple is right now. Apple uh, closed at 82.83. We're trading, we're bid 83. Let's just take a look at the tick chart uh, on Apple, see if anything's happening in here. And uh, hold on one second. So it looks like Apple has not reported yet. So, um, we'll, we'll, you know, that could uh, be potentially important for the market tomorrow. Uh, a move above 84.5, I think, is what could potentially get. Uh, Apple back, uh, you know, moving to the upside for a little bit, maybe a test of that 50-day moving average. But, uh, you know, betting on earnings, is, is that just a bet? So uh, risk management comes first.